Yes, you have this diagram. Yeah, we'll start. So this is your heading. Flexible exchange rate system. Okay, under flexible or floating exchange rate or also unstable as said by Butesa, unstable, I don't know, unstable exchange rate and Tanu Hedwodu. So it is flexible or floating or unstable exchange rate. The exchange rate is allowed to vary. So exchange rate is allowed to vary to international foreign exchange market influences. So as I've said, under flexible, it is market which decides the exchange rate and it varies. The exchange rate varies according to the market, right? Thus, uh, and that too, under market also, it is international foreign market, international market and not domestic market, remember this international market will decide it thus the government do not intervene so government will not intervene here this is left free uh, you must have in economics there is a concept concept of this lazy sphere lazy sphere if you have not heard of it i think it was there in the first sem uh, so this means no interference from the government side no government intervention so the same thing yeah it was there i think in those markets right uh, so thus government does not intervene rather it is the market forces that determine the exchange rate so the market is determining here in fact automatic variation in exchange rates consequent upon a change in market forces are the essence of freely fluctuating exchange rate system okay so you can write this one paragraph can you start with flexible exchange rate this one paragraph you can write i just quickly read out the other paras also but i don't think they are more important but then um, after that first para you can just draw this graph and uh, explain this graph that will be like more than sufficient here is your explanation and i'll just quickly read out but still i'll just quickly read out these other paras so a deficit and balance of payment accounts means an excess uh, supply of domestic currency in the world market as prices decline imbalances are removed in other words excess supply of domestic currency will automatically cause a fall in the exchange rate and balance of payment balance will be restored Flexible exchange rate mechanism has been explained in this figure. So the below figure, yeah, the explanation starts from here actually. Explanation of the below graph. Where DD is, DD and SSR demand and supply curve respectively. When Indians buy US goods, there arises supply of dollar. So when Indians are buying US goods, so what happens is there arises a supply of dollar that means when we are buying US goods, obviously we'll have to buy it in terms of dollars, right? So there's a supply of dollar. And when US people buy Indian goods, there occurs a demand for rupee. So there'll be a demand if US people, so the reverse, if US people are demanding for Indian goods, then there will be a demand for rupee because they'll have to buy it in terms of rupee, right? Initial exchange rate is 40 rupees. 
is equal to one dollar. It is uh, determined by the intersection of TD and SS curve in both the graphs. So I just show you this in the graph. So this is your TD or demand curve. S S is supply curve. Then the initial exchange rate is here, forty. 40 rupees is equal to one dollar this is your initial exchange rate system you can see this is your initial curve ss and then after s when is the later it comes like s1 right when it shifts from s from here to here so these are your initial curves s and d here again this is your initial curve this and this there's just one supply curve so demand curve is moving upwards here supply is moving downwards and this is going to be your initial exchange rate system okay so an increase in demand for india's exportable means an increase in demand for indian rupees so if indian goods are demanded more in external international market then there'll be uh, our exports will increase right there'll be demand for india's exportable goods and this will also increase the demand for indian rupee right consequently demand curve shifts to dd1 and the new exchange rate is right exchange rate will rise here to rupees 50 so the demand curve is shifting here when our goods are demanded more in international market so the demand you can see the demand is increasing that means a upward movement in demand curve and the exchange rate will also change here to 50 rupees so this is what can you conclude here you can see that Rupee the demand just there. First, it was only 40 rupees. There was a demand for only 40 rupees. Now, demand just the 50 rupees again. So, you can see there is a net 10 rupees increase. Uh, right? So, there is a net increase in the demand of 10 rupees. At this new exchange rate, a dollar appreciates while rupee depreciates in value. So at this new exchange rate, dollar will appreciate while rupee depreciates in the value. So this was in figure A. Now we'll be talking about figure B, the second graph. The second graph that is 5.8B shows that the initial exchange rate is again 40. Here also initial is 40 rupees. You can see now 40 rupees is equal to $1. Then the supply curve shifts to SS1 in response to an increase in demand for U.S. goods. So here we are demanding for more of U.S. goods and the supply curve will therefore fall here because it is like the supply curve is falling here. It means that the supply in domestic market is decreasing as we are going for U.S. goods imports more, right? S S1 curve intersects the D demand curve DT at point B. So you can see the S S1 curve is intersecting demand curve at this point B. And the exchange rate drops to rupees 30. So exchange rate will drop here. Exchange rate karme Net 10 again. 10 is the difference here. So this means that the dollar will depreciate while Indian rupee will appreciate. So appreciation on in uh, rupee is actually in an, any currency is not good. 
if it depreciates or devalues then in short term it is very beneficial for a country but uh, appreciation is not good appreciation or revaluation of money is not good though these terms looks like very positive terms and nice sounding wo words but uh, this the meaning or the significance is the inverse of the terms used so appreciation you should always remember the appreciation or revaluation is not good for any currency rather the depreciation is good and devaluation is good we have seen i've shown you how in with devaluation devaluation we have studied it in fixed value uh, exchange rate system when there is a devaluation we have seen how exports will increase right because uh, the value of rupee is going down therefore in less money in less rupee the other uh, foreigners can buy more of our goods right so the ex uh, i mean the exports the demand for our goods in international market will increase simultaneously the exports will increase and um, we we'll earn more rupee right i mean we will earn more money right the balance of payment problem can be solved here right so devaluation is actually good this manage exchange rate is actually not there in your syllabus and i have just given you a brief idea also about this it is actually partial uh, i mean this is a mixture of fixed and flexible both are working together here it is neither completely fixed nor completely flexible we can just go through it later also so that's it i think we are done with this part explanation of this flexible and then now we'll move to this we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages any doubts so far in this you have any doubts yes any doubts you have you can ask me before we proceed to advantages and disadvantages so this graph is clear right everyone has understood this okay then we'll move this flexible we'll look at the advantages and disadvantages of it please do make a note of these things as in how i am explaining these things because from now on i don't think we'll be sharing any notes with you people there is a strict instruction from principal madam saying that we are not supposed to distribute any notes so you have to do research part from your from your side and uh, make notes of these things whatever is being explained in the class right okay we'll look at this advantages and disadvantages advantages under this advantage first advantage is automatic adjustment in pop so automatically it will happen there is no need for government coming in and doing the work it will automatically happen automatically the balance of payment will get adjusted as it is left to market i told you flexible floating unstable so it's a flexible right according to the demand of the market it will automatically change and it will adjust the the balance of payment okay under this point the chief merit of freely fluctuating exchange rate is that the balance of payment this equilibrium gets corrected automatically with the change in exchange rate so balance of payment this equilibrium gets corrected automatically so this is the point you should note automatically with a change in exchange rate if a balance of payment deficit arises there would be an excess supply of home currency so if there is a 
deficit and balance of payment or this equilibrium then there would be an access supply of home currency leading to a fall in exchange rate simply by the market forces of demand and supply I told you how market is deciding with demand and supply so market forces of demand and supply this causes export goods cheaper and imports goods dearer dearer means costly the imports become costly and exports become cheap as a result exports tends to rise so exports are becoming cheap so exports will increase while imports will decline so naturally this is the law of economics if the prices are low then the demand for this will increase right and the same reverse and vice versa if the prices are high goes up then the demand will decrease the same thing is happening with exports also if the exports are becoming cheaper then exports will increase tends to rise while imports tends to decline thereby removing deficit in balance of payment account so this will remove the deficit similarly supply in balance of payment account meets excess demand for home currency and those rise in exchange rate this in turn encourages imports and discourages exports as a result balance of payment accounts will reach equilibrium by the same logic thus this exchange rate makes an automatic adjustment in balance of payment crisis of an economy and that too without government intervention so there is automatic adjustment without government intervention so these two points are very important automatic adjustment in bop without government intervention So we shall look at the second advantage. No collusion between internal and external objective. So we have seen under flex fixed exchange rate that there was a collusion between some other macroeconomic policies, other objectives. But here there is no collusion between internal and external objectives. Surplus and deficit in balance of payment accounts get corrected if the This part has got covered with this. If uh, exchange rate falls and rises respectively, in a regime of fixed exchange rate, the removal of balance of payment deficit requires adoption of internal policies like fall income and price level. So, in fixed exchange rate, what happens? You know, it requires the adoption of internal policies to adjust this balance of payment deficit. In other words, pegged, pegged or fixed. Yeah, you must remember this. Again, pegged exchange rate system is the another name of fixed exchange rate system. Requires a change in domestic macroeconomic policies like deflationary policies of price and output reduction. So under fixed exchange rate, you require domestic uh, change in domestic macroeconomic policies, but under flexible, we should look at flexible what happens. So now we are like comparing and studying. This will make your study more easier, learning more easier. So under flexible exchange rate system, system a government can adopt independent monetary policy. So here it can be independent monetary policy. In other words, under the system of exchange rate, internal balance could be maintained by the government. So internal balance is maintained by the government. It is further argued that as it is a self-adjusting mechanism to restore Flexible means self-adjusting, as we've seen in an earlier point, automatic. A government can put more effort in tackling internal problems of inflation and unemployment. So internally, what are the problems? Inflation, unemployment. Actually, uh, 
the external problem will be left here under flexible to the market it will automatically get gets adjusted whereas internal can be looked at external whereas internal is looked by government government can handle the internal problems whereas the external problem left can be left to the market right so there is no collision between external and internal policies under flexible so the third advantage absorption of sudden shocks so if there's any sudden shocks or temporary shocks we've seen under flexible or fixed exchange rate it was difficult to adjust to those temporary shocks but here it will automatically get adjusted to this uh, or absorb these sudden shocks in a flexible exchange rate the domestic economy remains insulated from external shocks and pressures under the system a threat of importing inflation from outside the country is minimal so under the system the threat of importing inflation from outside the country is minimum so the inflation from the outside of country is minimum this is because okay in other words of price feedback effect is imperceptible okay this is because what happens is we've seen there'll be automatic adjustment under flexible exchange rate and therefore there will not be any problem like inflation and all externally therefore inflation from outside the country will not come and will not affect our country okay we shall look at the next advantage minimum buffer of a foreign exchange reserve advantage so this is another advantage since exchange rate is not picked under floating arrangement of exchange rate the central bank of a country need not hold adequate foreign exchange reserve as a buffer against unforeseen development in international market so there is no need for any minimum foreign exchange reserves we've seen this we've learned what is actually foreign exchange reserve in them the account the foreign exchange reserve it's actually the reserve of foreign currencies so there's no need to hold this reserve as a buffer for any unseen problems in the economy because the problems will automatically get adjusted in flexible exchange rate system okay now we shall look at some of the disadvantages the first point under this is uncertainty and confusion so there is a uncertainty and confusion under flexible exchange rate system flexible exchange rate and trade presents an atmosphere of uncertainty and confusion in trade and investment susceptibility to uncertainty is greater as soon as exchange rate fluctuates freely suppose an indian has departed and export invoice to the foreign buyers but the indian exporters do not know at what price foreign currency will be converted into indian currency so there is always uncertainty right foreign we never know like how will it change how will the currency change or how the exchange rate will change so it can change any time nobody can predict it here it is flexible it is like it can change it it will change very frequently therefore uncertainty this kind of uncertainty hampers trade and i've told you the uncertainty is not good for economy uncertainty means the investors will little hesitate to invest because they never know what can happen you know, later if what if the investors are coming and investing a huge money on some project of their and what if tomorrow anything goes wrong and you know uh, they go undergo loss so you know they will hesitate from investing huge money if there's uncertainty 
So however, such uncertainty can be largely minimized through forward exchange rate contracts. That is, okay, so time is up. Any doubts, if you have, you can ask me. Anytime you can like, disturb me and ask me. Otherwise, I'll keep continuing this. Yes, any doubts? Okay, till you come up with your doubt, I'll continue with this. If you have a doubt, you can anytime interrupt me and ask me a doubt, please. So 10 minutes is actually for your doubts. So however, such uncertainty can be largely minimized through forward exchange contracts. So forward exchange contracts are nothing but these are predetermined contracts, right? They must have, I mean, the contract must have taken place before the trade. So they can be assured now with forward exchange contracts. So certainty will come. So this way, this uncertainty can be reduced. The other uncertainty involved in this kind of exchange rate may cause trading community to lose some confidence in the system. So uncertainty will naturally lead to loss in confidence in the system. So this is one disadvantage. The second one is hampering investment. Yes, any doubts you have? Any doubts? Okay, the second point. Second disadvantage is hampering investment. So naturally, if there's uncertainty, all these lack of confidence, so obviously the investment will get hampered. That is, investment will go down, right? People will not come forward investing huge money. So unregulated free floating exchange rate often discourages foreign investment as exchange rate becomes erratic and hence destabilizing, unstable we can say. Very unstable it is. Because of uncertainty associated, yeah, again this point is linked to this. Why hampering of investment? Because of uncertainty. Right? With this exchange rate involving profit and loss implication. I just gave you example loss here. Right here, I just gave you example. What if they go for huge investment? What if they occur loss? So This will discourage investors from making huge investment, right? What if the huge investment and what if the loss? Okay, and so this is a problem. Every ent entrepreneur or businessman look for profit when they go for investment. Okay? Profit is only motto of any businessman. So loss implications of uh, foreign investment deals, a country might experience decumulation of capital. Hence, it is destabilizing in effect. Risk, instability, and speculation. This is the another disadvantage. There is risk. Obviously, if there's uncertainty again, there is a risk. In uncertainty, if you're going to invest huge money, that is a huge risk because you can, there are huge, uh, there are, uh, the, there's a high chance of you going to the loss, right? So instability, there's again unstability or speculation, right? Doubts, speculations are nothing but doubts, again, uncertainties, doubts. Okay, flexible exchange rate encourages wide speculation since foreign exchange prices are not known in advance as in fixed exchange rate. So there's wide speculation as prices are not known in advance, unlike fixed exchange rate system. It is because of speculation there occurs disruptive hot money flows. That means the money flow in our 
or in any country will decline will go down money flow right and to put it elaborately it can be argued that when uh, the exchange rate tends to decline speculators anticipate that such that such would continue to decline further and the possibility of the flight of money to another country will brighten so if the money is declining naturally people will think that it would go down still further right so this is the tendency psychology of people if the money is declining today naturally people will think it will still go down right like uh, i can give you example here of the prices of food i mean the vegetables so eager vegetable do tarkari price jasti idre now we predict martivi inna munde jasti agutte anta predict martivi alva so this is natural tendency among people and this is actually like not good for economy again to put it elaborately it can be argued that when the exchange rate tends to decline speculators anticipate that such would continue to decline further and the possibility of the flight of money to another country will brighten so the foreigners whoever have invested their money in our country will take back their money and go and invest it somewhere else right where they can uh, they can be like some certainty where there's some stability right where they can be assured of some like stability or some stable in interest rate right this will then cause a further fall in the exchange rate so this will further cause a further fall this will further reduce the exchange rate thus greater the speculation against a currency the deeper the economic crisis so i've said the speculation is actually not good it will lead to deeper economic crisis however economists are not unanimous about this kind of speculation associated with the flexible exchange rate system okay the next point fourth disadvantages inflationary in character so this is inflationary in character so we shall look at how it is inflationary by nature flexible exchange rate is inflationary in character as soon as the exchange rate falls automatically consequent upon the balance of payment deficit import goods become expensive so if the exchange rate is falling automatically then what happens is import goods become expensive right so what is exchange rate it is basically exchanging of two currencies so if exchange rate is falling that means you know our uh, we need more money to exchange it with the other you know um other currency like say rupee to dollar therefore we'll have to spend more on one dollar therefore you no know, imports will go down it will become expensive right we'll have to pay more for the imports now with the foreign exchange rate so high cost of imported goods then fuels inflationary tendencies so if the cost of imported good is going up then it is inflation that's inflation right inflation is rise in prices but the value of money actually decreases value will decrease right so the prices of imports is increasing that means inflation will occur as depreciation of a currency makes imports costlier the domestic economy faces both demand pull and cost push the inflationary pressure it is because of these drawbacks of freely fluctuating exchange rate that countries attach importance to 
managed extreme strain system. So because of these drawbacks of freely fluctuating.